Okay, welcome everybody. Today we've got a host of clubs from around England to tell you about how they're keeping their members engaged during lockdown. First of all, I'd like to introduce Karen Falcon from Stokes Bay Sailing Club. Thanks for joining me, Karen. Karen's been running a really active and successful engagement programme with her club. So we're going to ask a few questions of Karen, just so that you, you can share um, good ideas and hopefully people can pick up on some things and, and try and use them in their own clubs. So Karen, many clubs have been running quizzes and e-sailing, but you guys have also included some interviews. Can you tell me about a bit about how they work and who you've interviewed? Yeah, so um, so we thought that an interview was quite a um, an easy way of having something that could go out once or twice a week that members could listen to in their own time. Um, and it didn't require a member to be sat at the computer live, um, which can be a bit restricting at times. So we um, just had to think about who our club was um, and we, we're quite a racing club um, and we had a look at our members and, and who we've got and who our connections are with where we're race, where we're based and where we sail um, and then just kind of got in touch with people and started interviewing so I made the first start and interviewed I think seven people one week um, we've got um, two coaches who are going to the games we've got two two members who are, who've been to um, Olympic Games so we we started with them um, we've got um, we always host a laser qualifier and we've got a big laser class so we also got in touch with some people who um, had, had had raced at the club um, and and, and sold their lasers so we got in touch with um, uh, Elliot Hansen who's, who's been selected for the laser um, and we then also at the same time thought about which club members we've got and what we could get from our club members to try and create some of that boat park banter um, to, to learn a bit more about the history of the club. So we've had a couple of um, older members be interviewed to find out about the yeah the, the history of the club and, and share their memories um, and we've also had um, people from the same class interview each other, which has been quite uh, quite amusing. We've had cadets interview each other, kind of older cadets, um, and we've also had a family, which is going out on Saturday, a uh, family of four sit down and kind of share ten of their highlights of um, of of, uh, of sailing as well. Um, the Commodore um, and and just people from different classes to try and pick up um, on what our club has and who our club caters for. Yeah, it's amazing. So there's a real broad spectrum of people that you've interviewed. Um, yeah. With all of that going on and the quizzes and the e-sailing, um, we can show the audience the rotor that you've drawn up on the screen. Um, so talk us through why this rotor has been important to, to fit all of that in. Um, so kind of how you've used it and why you feel it's been important to the club members. Um, so it started week one with the sailing um, and, and the two members who were running that, Chloe Barr and Ben Elvin, um, decided to follow the normal sailing program so our Wednesdays and Sundays were, were pretty fixed. Uh, Chloe also did a photo competition in the first week on a Monday so that provided our, our structure. Um, we then decided to do a quiz uh, which in a Thursday night is quite nice for a quiz that that goes out live and we do that on Zoom um, and then we had Tuesday and Friday um, where we thought that the videos would be quite good. They go out at five o'clock so that if um, you know children are still awake they, they can watch it um before bedtime um and then it left us saturday free um because somehow that's still quite a busy day for families even though not everybody's at work um and then sunday we can fill with slightly different things so that was when we did our history of the club talk we just had a uh, one of our members tony tony woods um and his partner net robinson they did a jazz evening um just two days ago and then yeah just different interviews um we, we, we or, or different things we do on a sunday so it just means that club members can can add that to their weeks um so they know what's happening and um and when Yes, yeah, so you've been keeping it really updated on your website and making sure on Facebook as well, haven't you, to make sure that the club members know when everything's on and they can dip in and out and that regular activity each week so that they know is also then helping them to dip in and out. I've seen the um, the kind of the Facebook posts and the comments and it is, certainly is popular. Um, yeah. Presuming that we go forward into lockdown for at least a few more weeks, are there, are there any kind of changes? Is, it, is this going to grow or, or adapt? Um, from what you've learned so far? Yeah, so we've just, um, from Saturday, I've just added in on a Saturday morning um, uh, riddles, just, so just three riddles go out every Saturday, um, and also um, either some interviews 
that are maybe more cadet focused or um, a couple of the videos that the RYA have been producing and um, was putting them out on a Saturday morning, which is when the cadets would, would normally sail. Um, they're not limited to cadets, that they're open to everybody, but we're just trying to plug that. So we, we've added that in. Um, the other thing that has been evolving is um, just changing up who who does the quiz. So I now alternate the quiz with one of our, our newer members, Julia Miles, who uh, Mills, sorry, who, who was a member and then has, has come back to the club. So so she alternates with me. So that's quite nice. So I guess in terms of our evolutions, it's a bit more about about sharing to reduce the, the, the workload and get more voices being heard um, within the group, really. Yeah, great, because it must be an awful lot of work because um, you're putting so much on. So the fact that you're bringing in a wider team sounds sounds excellent because it's going to make that really sustainable in the long term. So finally, yeah. then, kind of, what's the response been from the members? What what um, what responses have you had? Have you had anything other than the Facebook comments and things? Yeah, so we, um, we we've tried to vary the platforms that we do things on. So if people don't have Facebook, um, they they can still access things. We have encouraged members to to, to join the group, um, and we've got about two hundred and thirty members within um, the group, which which I think is quite a high proportion. Thanks very much, Karen. And thanks for sparing the time to share your experiences and successes with us. I think you're going to see, and any club who's doing the sort of engagement that you are, are going to see massive payback in the long run from your members. The satisfaction they've got from being part of such an active club um, and their loyalty to the club. So I think it's, it's really good and, and, and truly amazing. OK, joining us next, we've got Tom Whittingham from Bowmore Sailing Club. Tom, we know Bowmore's been doing lots of engagement um, with its members, as has Karen's club. Um, but I'd like to speak to you specifically about your newsletter, Bowsprit. Many clubs have got a newsletter, um, but yours is really well formatted and, and really nice to look at. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the format and, and kind of how you're currently changing that, as well as how often you send it? Yeah, morning, Rob. Yeah, we produce a, a newsletter. Um, and that's done on a literally a weekly basis. Every now and again, we'll miss a week for Christmas, high days and holidays. Uh, but uh, normally look to get that information on out there. The normal format we have is a bit of an opening from me as a Commodore. And then we'll go through a little section on uh, the training news, what, what training is coming up, club news, social events, things like that's happening. Um, maybe a report from open events. And then the calendar in detail, four weeks out, although that's also on our on our website. Uh, and really, that's just a case of pushing information out there, trying to do it in a sort of lighthearted manner, try to find some uh, some really good photographs to put on in there, um, either to amplify what's being put in the article or just to lighten the mood, basically. Yeah, that's great. Um, and that last newsletter you read, the rope that I was reading, um, you were quite detailed about the cost savings um, and the funding that you've gone for and the financial kind of standing of the club during this really difficult time. Kind of, can you just enlighten us on why you think it's so important for the for you to be that transparent and for the club to be transparent about its finances and its current situation? Well. When we get onto the transparency bit, obviously, you know, all the accounts are published on a, a yearly basis anyway. So people would have known what sort of reserves that we had set against um, what we saw as the operational risks to the club survival. Um, but running on into this, obviously, there were a lot of people wanted information to determine what was actually happening. Um, we can, if you look at some of the ridiculous speculation in the press, so we just thought open information, being absolutely transparent about where we were, why we were doing what we were doing. So we covered off the uh, the, the, the lockdown and the measures that we were going to implement, um, and those were actually put on the website as well. So we were looking at the uh, financial situation. A lot of people were hearing that various things were closing down and there were all sorts of problems. So we thought it was quite important that the membership knew that the club was still going to be there and able to operate when we came out the other side of this uh, terrible situation. And uh, you know that's the basis of why we were putting that information on out there. Yeah, it's it's really clear when you when you read that article of yours that that you're so 
Um, so keen to let your members know that the club is secure, uh, but also you talk about looking forward to the future and, and when when we do come out of this, this pandemic and when we come out of this difficult time, that the club will review its situation and therefore review membership fees going forwards. And I think um, it, it's really nice to see that open discussion without promises because we don't know where anybody's going to be at the end of this. Um, but, but, you know, have you, have you got any thoughts on that and why, why you've suggested that? Yes, I mean, we let people know that we were going to be applying uh, and we were very lucky to get the um, grant from Cotswold District Council, which is designed to uh, to support sports clubs, sports facilities. Um, but we had to, to make it abundantly clear that the, that money was provided by the council to ensure the long term future of the club. I was there was going to be something to come back to, not just to compensate um, the membership. Now we've got um, fixed costs or sunk costs, as you could call them, that are, are going to be ongoing. We're going to take a big hit on income over the summer from uh, loss of training. Um, and we've already had some of that and loss of membership because quite often we'll get new members joining about this time of year, looking ahead to um, like the beautiful weather we've had this last week and uh, being able to get up in the water and and learn to sail so you no know, we've we have got um effectively trading losses and the grant will go some way to, to towards dealing with that but we've also got to be cognizant of the fact that our membership have taken a hit and they've not had access to the facility to be able to sail swim paddleboard canoe um, and so you know we don't know what margin that we're going to have to be able to to rebate that because we're looking ahead our decision amongst the executive committee was that what we should focus on is looking at a rebate when people renew their membership not just going we're going to start trying to pay back money now and again when we come around to that our membership renews in october that we will have hopefully a very clear understanding of what the impact's been um, our financial year actually runs from I think the beginning of July and end of June, so um, we're all, we're already part, part way into that. So we've taken a hit on this financial year, and we and we know we're going to take a hit on next financial year. So it's a case of being able to to scope what we can do. We do have a five year plan, so we had planned ahead, uh, and so we'll be looking at what we all need to descope out of that to ensure that we've got. Uh, a, a, an attractive option to encourage people to renew their membership and stay with the club. Yeah, thanks, Tom. I think you're absolutely right. And uh, how do you think that this newsletter content is going to affect the club membership in the long run? Well, the key bit there is the engagement and encouraging people to uh, renew their membership. That's why we're looking at um, potential rebates, but obviously we're not going to know exactly how much we can do till. Uh, we're actually the other side of this. Um, and if we're open with them and we can keep them engaged, there's more chance that they're actually going to, to see that there is a, a long term future for them at the club and that the club is going to survive. So that, that's the key bit. Um, and it's keeping them satisfied and interested in what's going on. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Tom. I think you're doing a great job of engaging your members and I'm sure club satisfaction will be really high when we do return to water. Um, thanks very much for your time today. Next up, we're going to be talking to Edmund from Oldswater Sailing Club. Um, Oldswater have certainly taken e-sailing to the next level um, and e-sailing, it's fair to say, nationally has really taken off with over 400 clubs taking up the free VIP membership. So that's really fantastic. And I think we're nearly at 250 clubs entering the Spring Series now. So, so that's really great. But Edmund, uh, you've been taking e-sailing to a new level. So can you tell me how, as a member of Oldswater Sailing Club and as Oldswater Sailing Club as a whole, how you've been connecting with other local clubs um, using virtual regatta? Yes, so we've, uh, we've basically been doing inter-club racing. So. Uh, we had our normal club racing on the virtual game uh, and then a few members came together and we decided, well, how about we take this to other clubs and race against other people uh, to see what they're like on the game. So we've started setting up on a Thursday night. We're racing against a different club every week. 
which has been a real good one uh, and it's got some friendly rivalries going between different sailing clubs in the north uh, and are hopefully going to branch it out and set up a mini series with lots of different sailing clubs in the north. Excellent, cool. And and kind of what tech have you been using to do that alongside virtual regatta? Is there anything else you've been using to make that work? Yes, yeah, so to give a better atmosphere of playing the game, because when you're playing it, you're very much on your own uh, and it can get a bit boring. So we decided to get Zoom. Uh, so we've got a membership with Zoom uh, and we set up conference calls every time we play the game. Uh, so we've got everyone on webcams uh, and it's basically like bringing the bar to people's houses uh, and it's giving a great atmosphere while playing the game. Uh, and it's also brought in members who we don't see that often or we don't, they, they aren't sailors, have started playing the game or just jumping on Zoom and having a beer with us and all having a good chat on Zoom uh, and getting to know each other and socialising, which is great to see with obviously the sailing club lockdown that actually people are still socialising and getting to know each other. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? It's great for that social aspect. But what's really good that you're saying, and I've heard from elsewhere, is actually it's starting to engage people who might have found there were kind of some cliquey barriers physically at the club, but now on a Zoom meeting or from a more distance, some of that's been broken down and, and it could really start to engage some other members that you haven't seen so far. So that that's really fantastic. Um, so you normally run an annual regatta at the club about this time of year. I think you said it was called the Daffodil Regatta, is that right? Yes, yeah, so this time of year we run the Daffodil Regatta, uh, which we have lots of different classes take part, uh, lots of different clubs over sort of majority the north of the U of England come to do it. Uh, but obviously we had to cancel that due to COVID-19. Uh, so we thought, well, what can we do? Let's take it on virtual regatta. Uh, so we did that over the weekend with, I think we had about nearly 40 p entries to it and we did some knockout rounds. Uh, and then we got a lot of feedback, people saying, well, I don't play the game. How do I get involved? Uh, so we decided to move it to Facebook Live. So we streamed our semi-finals and finals on Facebook Live, which meant that people who don't play the game could actually get to see what was going on. We've actually found we've probably got another 10 people who are now interested in joining us on Zoom uh, to chat or want to play the game because uh, they saw what good fun it was and we were all having great fun playing it so all now want to get involved uh, so yeah so it's trying to broaden it so every member can make the most of it really yeah that's amazing well thanks for giving us a really good enlightening kind of uh, ideas of how you're stretching that e-sailing that bit further it, it is really good and, and thanks for joining us today um so we've no seen worries. three different clubs yeah thanks very much We've seen three different clubs from three different parts of the country, all super interacting with their, their membership, really engaging with their membership. And I think if we all carry on working like this, when we do get back to sailing, our, our clubs can be stronger than ever. OK, so that's me for this week. Next week, we'll be looking at how to start to plan for returning to the water, some of the risk assessments that might be involved with that, and some of the ideas as to how we can start to slowly open our clubs back up when government advice allows us to. That's all for now. Stay safe. See you next week.